Hello everyone, my name is Mina Ranjandani. I'm an infectious disease physician at the University of Washington in Seattle. This podcast is dedicated to an STD literature review for healthcare professionals who are interested in remaining up to date on the diagnosis, management, and prevention of STDs. We're going to focus this episode describing some recent published literature on a potential future vaccine for gonorrhea. With the possible threat of untreatable gonorrhea due to extensive antibiotic resistance, a vaccine to prevent this infection would be great. Now, historically, vaccine development for this organism has been a huge challenge. Until very recently, there was a lack of an animal model to mimic natural disease. Now, thankfully, there's a female mouse model of gonococcal general tract infection, and actually a human model that is worth mentioning. So that's been helpful. With Neisseria gonorrhea infection, weak immunity develops, and there's evidence that the protective immune responses to Neisseria gonorrhea do not develop with natural infection. For example, people can get recurrent gonococcal infection even with a similar strain. So previous infection does not seem to prevent new infection. Now there's 80 to 90% genetic homology in the sequences between Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitis. Despite the genetic homology between these two organisms, there has been little evidence that widely used vaccines against Neisseria meningitis, serogroups A, C, W, and Y, protects against gonococcal disease. The vaccine against the group B strain of Neisseria meningitis is developed a little bit differently. It's based on the outer membrane vesicle, which is a complex membrane structure naturally released from the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. So there was an exciting study that was published in 2017 from New Zealand, which found an older meningococcal group B vaccine, which is also called MenZB, provided 31% protection against gonorrhea in those who were vaccinated. And similar findings were shown by epidemiological studies after the use of group B meningococcal outer membrane vesicle vaccines in both Cuba and Norway. So this identified a possible breakthrough in gonococcal vaccine development. The original vaccine MenZB, which was developed to control a meningococcal epidemic in New Zealand, is no longer available. But another recombinant meningococcal group B vaccine, 4C MenB, also known as Bexero, is used around the world. For some background, Bexero contains the MenZB outer membrane vesicle component, as well as additional recombinant antigens. Some of these articles we're going to go through in this episode are more lab-based, but I'll do my best to summarize them. The first article to discuss was published in Clinical Infectious Diseases, September 2019, by Dr. Semchenko and colleagues. It is titled, The Serogroup B Meningococcal Vaccine Bexero Elicits Antibodies to Neisseria Gonorrhea. This study provides some data on the potential of meningococcal vaccine antigens to generate an immune response that recognizes gonococcal proteins, possibly through cross-reactive antibodies. So first, the authors did a bioinformatics analysis to evaluate the similarity of major outer membrane vesicles in the MenZB vaccine and the Bexero vaccine and compared them to gonococcal proteins from available Neisseria gonorrhea genomes. They found a high level of amino acid identity between most of the major outer membrane vesicle proteins found in MenZB and Bexero, as well as the Neisseria gonorrhea homologs. This suggests that the potential for the Bexero vaccine, which is currently being used in outbreak situations, to also generate an immune response that recognizes gonococcal proteins, similar to what MenZB vaccine did in New Zealand. Other recombinant antigens found in the Bexero vaccine, they focused on the Neisserial heparin binding antigen as this is believed to be a surface-exposed protein, therefore accessible to vaccine-induced antibodies, and a nice target for the immune system. They identified a high level of homology and cross-reactivity between the meningococcal and gynococcal Neisserial heparin binding antigens. This suggests that the Bixero vaccine may result in additional cross-protection against gonorrhea than what was seen with the MenZB vaccine. Serum from rabbits immunized with the antigens present in the Bexero vaccine, such as the outer membrane vesicle component or the three recombinant antigens, was able to recognize gonococcal proteins, including the Neisserial heparin binding antigen. This suggests the capacity of Bexero vaccine to induce anti-gonococcal antibodies. In humans vaccinated with Bexero, antibody titers were significantly increased from pre- to post-vaccination against whole-cell Neisseria gonorrhea as well as the gonococcal Neisserial heparin binding antigen. 
So the study provides some exciting data to help support gonorrhea vaccine development. They identified several proteins present in the Bixero vaccine that are also present in Neisseria gonorrhea with a high level of sequence identity and are also able to show that the vaccine can induce antibodies that recognize gonococcal proteins, including identifying potential vaccine targets. The next article I'd like to discuss was published in PLOS Pathogens in December 2020. This manuscript is titled The Serogroup B Meningococcal Outer Membrane Vesicle-Based Vaccine, 4C Men B, Induces Cross-Species Protection Against Neisseria Gonorrhea, and this was published by Dr. Leduc and colleagues. The authors evaluated the in vivo efficacy of the licensed Bixero vaccine in a female mouse model of Neisseria Gonorrhea Lower General Tract Infection. Mice were vaccinated with the Bixero vaccine by either subcutaneous or intraperitoneal routes and then inoculated with Neisseria gonorrhea. They also had a control population. The authors found that the Bixero vaccination induced antibodies, more specifically serum IgG as well as vaginal IgA and IgG that cross-reacted with Neisseria gonorrhea. They also found that the immunization with the vaccine accelerated clearance and reduced gonorrhea bacterial burden compared to controls. So for example, 70 to 88% of mice given Bexero vaccine by the subcutaneous and intraperitoneal routes cleared gonorrhea by day seven compared to only 25 to 30% of mice in control groups. Now to examine the cross-reactivity of the Bexero-induced antibodies against Neisseria gonorrhea surface proteins, the authors evaluated pooled antisera from immunized mice and they found they recognized four prominent bands or different proteins in the fractionated outer membrane vesicle preparations of six different strains of gonorrhea. And antibodies from vaccinated mice recognized at least five Neisseria gonorrhea surface proteins, including the Neisseria heparin binding antigen that was mentioned earlier. They compared the reactivity of serum from the Bixero immunized mice with that of immunized humans and identified additional Neisseria gonorrhea proteins that appear to be recognized by both mice and humans. For example, they found cross-reactive antibodies against Neisseria gonorrhea antigens, such as an antigen called the outer membrane secretin PIL-Q, as well as a Neisseria heparin binding antigen, and possibly several unidentified proteins based on similarities in apparent molecular weight in both humans and mice. So the authors found in the study is that in immunized mice, Bixero reduces Neisseria gonorrhea bioburden, accelerates clearance of infection, and induces antibodies that recognize Neisseria gonorrhea outer membrane proteins or surface antigens, several of which are promising vaccine targets. The study also validates the female mouse model as a possible system for studying vaccine-induced protection against gonococcal disease. The third article to discuss is more clinical. This is a manuscript that was published in Clinical Infectious Diseases, September 2021, by Dr. Turner and colleagues. It is titled, Infection with the U.S. Neisseria meningitis, urethritis clade, does not lower future risk of urethral gonorrhea. This is a fascinating study, and there's a bit of a backstory. In 2015, there were clusters of phylogenetically linked cases of urethritis that were reported in the U.S., and the cause was a novel Neisseria meningitides clade. In the present article, the authors did a retrospective cohort study from 2015 to 2018 in Columbus, Ohio, to examine the risk of Neisseria gonorrhea among men who previously had the U.S. Neisseria meningitides urethritis clade infection. So I'm just going to say Neisseria meningitides urethritis for short. But just remember, it was a specific clade that was found in the U.S., The goal was to find out whether Neisseria meningitides urethritis infection confers protection against subsequent gonorrhea. The study population included 887 participants, 65% were black, 82% were heterosexual, and the median age was 28 years. During the follow-up period, 43% of men returned to the STI clinic. Now 73 men, or 57% of those that followed up, had baseline urethral Neisseria meningitides infection. Now what they found is that men with baseline urethral Neisseria meningitides infection had a similar urethral Neisseria gonorrhea risk during follow-up as men with baseline urethral Neisseria gonorrhea infection. And this was an adjusted hazard ratio of 1.27. 
they had a slightly increased urethral Neisseria gonorrhea risk compared to those with a baseline urethral chlamydia trachomatis infection, but this was not significant. That adjusted hazards ratio was 1.51. Men with a baseline urethral Neisseria meningitides infection had increased urethral Neisseria gonorrhea risk compared to men with no baseline urethral gonorrhea or chlamydia infection, and this was significant. This had an adjusted hazard ratio of 3.55. The authors also evaluated sequences in the U.S. Neisseria meningitides urethritis clade and two Neisseria gonorrhea strains for the core outer membrane vesicle derived and recombinant protein antigens that are found in the Vixero vaccine. We just discussed these antigens in the previous articles, which are thought to elicit cross-protective antibodies. They found the median sequence similarities for the shared outer membrane vesicle-derived proteins were greater than 97%. The recombinant protein antigen, Neisserial heparin binding antigen, which we had mentioned earlier, had greater than 78% sequence similarity. So in summary, urethral Neisseria meningitis infection did not protect against future Neisseria gonorrhea infection, despite the high sequence similarities in shared protein antigens. Compared with men with a history of urethral Neisseria gonorrhea or chlamydia trachomatis, men with a history of urethral Neisseria meningitis infection had a similar risk of gonococcal disease. It is interesting that men with a prior urethral Neisseria meningitis urethritis had a higher risk of acquiring urethral Neisseria gonorrhea than men who were baseline negative for urethral gonorrhea or chlamydia infection. What the study shows is that if urethral Neisseria meningitides urethritis infection elicited a cross-reactive immune response in the mucosal surface, it was just not potent, durable, or specific enough to protect against Neisseria gonorrhea acquisition. It will be interesting to see further research into how shared gonococcal and meningococcal antigens contribute to cross-protective immunity. To conclude, I'd like to summarize some key points from this session. There's a pressing need for a gonorrhea vaccine due to the high disease burden associated with gonococcal infections globally, as well as the rapid evolution of antibiotic resistance in Neisseria gonorrhea. There are several proteins present in the meningococcal group B vaccine that are also present in Neisseria gonorrhea, and they have a high level of sequence identity, and the vaccine can also induce antibodies that recognize gonococcal proteins. The Bixero vaccine reduces Neisseria gonorrhea bioburden and accelerates clearance of infection in the female mouse model, and this female mouse model may be a good system for studying vaccine-induced protection. In patients, urethral Neisseria meningitis infection has not been shown to protect against future Neisseria gonorrhea. There is now an ongoing clinical trial in the USA and Thailand that is evaluating the Bixero as a vaccine to prevent gonococcal infection. I look forward to seeing results from this trial. This podcast is brought to you by the National STD Curriculum, the University of Washington STD Prevention Training Center, and is funded by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Transcripts and references for this podcast series can be found on our website, the National STD Curriculum at www.std.uw.edu. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.